Welcome back to another episode. Sorry that I've been a little bit absent lately. So we actually have moved over to Mildura, which is about six and a half hours from where we used to live in Albury. And I've been busy with my husband finishing renovating our house that we had over there. I've recently just put it on the market. So it's been pretty hectic over the last couple of months. Um, and then probably the last three to four weeks was really, really busy. I was on school holidays, um, so my day job, for those who don't know, I'm actually a teacher. Um, and during school holidays, I go back to Wagga a lot of the time and I do Defence like Air Force Reserve days. So in between that, I was also working on a house in Albury. And as you can see from all the photos I'm sharing with you guys, this is what our house ended up looking like. And now we're just waiting for it to sell, which will be pretty cool. And I'll free up a lot of my time as well, which would be great. So what I want to talk to you guys about today, obviously, big thing is the CrossFit Games are going to be exciting and how exciting this year is going to be compared to last year. We're back at in-person competition. We're back having like a big, large field. There's going to be 40 athletes. There is also heaps and heaps of other divisions this year. So we've actually got a lot. So we've got all the Masters divisions, all the team divisions, but then also added into this year, you've got all of your people who have disabilities or loss of limbs and stuff like that. So there's heaps of other uh, categories that are going to be super cool. And what's even better is this year, every single category is going to be live filmed. So it's not just the elite teams and the elite individuals. Every category is going to be live filmed for everyone to watch. Whereas in the past, you never got to see any footage of the Masters athletes competing or the teens athletes competing. This year, if you have someone competing in that area, you can actually watch the live footage behind that as well, which will be super cool. So a lot has actually happened over the last few weeks. The last uh, time I spoke to you guys, we spoke about the last chance qualifier. Now that's already gone through. On the Aussie side, we had Khan Porter who finished in fifth place. And then we also had James Newbury who finished in 10th place, okay? So both of those have actually been selected to be a part of the demo team for the CrossFit Games, which is super cool to have two Aussies in there. We have, have, have had Aussies in there in the past. So I remember Jess Coghlan, she was part of the demo team in the past. Um, so it's pretty cool to have two of our Australian boys selected for the CrossFit demo team. So on the women's side, we had Maddie Sturt, who finished third on after the last chance qualifier. Now, on the after the last chance qualifier, only the top two got to go to the CrossFit Games, so it was a little bit sad for her and disappointing that she didn't make it. However, such a such an amazing effort to come back and to really do well on the last chance qualifier. And considering that Torian Pro was, I think, only two weeks before that, so it wasn't even that much of a turnaround. <clears throat> now we do have. Uh, in the Masters category, there is Alethea Boone. She's uh, competing in the CrossFit Games. So it's actually just, I just messaged her before and just to confirm, and she has actually decided to withdraw from the CrossFit Games, which is disappointing. However, um, she said that it was due to uncertainty and everything. And with everything that's going on at the moment in the world, and especially with all the stuff that's going on in Australia, like we've got massive riots going on, We've got states in full lockdown. There's just heaps of stuff going on and no one really knows what's happening. So for her to make that decision, I think that that was probably a good thing for her. And obviously she wouldn't have made that decision without thinking about it really hard. She is also um, currently over in New Zealand. So she hasn't been home for a long time. And she was, she's obviously from New Zealand. So for her, she's spending a lot of time back with her family and friends as well. Now, some workouts... We haven't actually had official workouts released yet. They've just had snippets of what workouts are. Okay, so event one. So that's going to be on Wednesday, July 28th. So for us, that's on Thursday, July 29th, because we're a little bit different in time zones. So it's all that's been released is that there's going to be a swim and it's going to be a long distance, whether that might be a kilometre, whether that might be two kilometres, we don't know. So obviously, Madison has a massive lake. They'll have access to that lake whilst there. Um, and then there's also a paddle as well. So 
uh, and that's supposed to be long as well. Now, previous history on the paddle, the Australians really, really did well on this, okay, and our Aussie girls especially are really strong in the paddle as well as in the swim. So I definitely think the two, uh, Tia and Kara are going to absolutely crush that workout. So individual event two hasn't been specifically released. However, we do know that there is going to be some pig flips in it. Now, they were back in 2015. I think they were in another games as well. Okay, um, so it'll be really interesting to see what they put with that workout. Um, back when they were in 2015, that was obviously new to everyone. A lot of people were struggling. There was a few different techniques on how to get the pig over because it is quite heavy and challenging. Um, individual event three has been released, so it's a 550-yard dash. I mean, I don't think that anyone will be dashing. I think that they'll be sprinting super hard. Um, I mean, it's going to be about who can hold on and really run hard in that. So I think it's about 500 metres. So whether or not if you're a strong 400-metre runner, how much more can you have in the tank for that little bit extra? So that'll be quite interesting th to see. I think also T is going to come through really well as that, being a previous track hurdle star as well. Now, individual event five has been released. is hasn't fully been released, however. Okay, so it is four rounds. We do know that. We do know that it includes four rope climbs, whether they are legless or not. We aren't 100% sure yet. It's a 500 slash 400 ski, so that must be four meters. And then it said a sandbag carry. So we don't know the distance of that. We also don't know the weight of the sandbag for men and women yet. So not everything has been put out there about that event. Then individual event eight has been sort of released as well. It's going to be a handstand obstacle walk. So it has the parallel bars again, okay, where they had to uh, handstand walk up a ramp onto the parallels across down and then they also had to continue on to other activities so i believe back when it was in previously in the crossfit games it actually started with the uh, stairs and then it went down a ramp and then i think it went up a ramp down a ramp and then it went on to the actual parallel obstacle and from memory brooke wells won that on the female side and no one was really watching her and she really came through and absolutely dominated that event so i'm sure she'll do well again Last year at the CrossFit Games, when it was only the five of them who went through, she did absolutely crush the handstand walk event that they had, and she smoked the rest of the field. <clears throat> they have also announced that they're going to have Hussafel bags. Now, this is a strongman apparatus, so it's like a tombstone kind of uh, stone they carry around in uh, strongman. So... It's going to be interesting to see whether or not the actual event is going to be strongman biased. Like, are they going to have to carry it for distance, which they do in strongman competitions? Um, how heavy is it as well, which will be interesting to see. And it'll be cool to see what they do with it. Now, one other thing they have spoken about is there is going to be cuts still. So we saw back in 2020, they had cuts. So they obviously had all of the international athletes and stuff come through actually this is 2019 so in 2019 they had all the uh, cuts happen and a lot of the big name athletes didn't make it into that top 10 now this is what we have been told okay so the competition starts on a wednesday so on a thursday for us so all 40 athletes will all complete wednesday's workouts so we don't know how many there is yet but we know that there is obviously one then they get a day off and then Friday, they all come back and all athletes will compete complete Friday's workout. However, after the last workout on the Friday, the field will be cut down from 40 to 30. So the person, people who are sitting below that 30 line, 30 mark on the leaderboard, will no longer finish the rest of the weekend. Then on Saturday, all 30 athletes will do event one. Then after event one, the field will get cut back to top 20 then those top 20 athletes will finish the rest of the CrossFit Games. Now, my opinions on this is I don't really know why CrossFit is doing this. Um, there was a lot of backlash in regards to the cuts last time. 
And considering how much some of these athletes have actually had to fundraise and outlay to just get to the CrossFit Games this year, and then say if they get cut after Friday, they only get to spend two days of competition. So I kind of think that in this whole pandemic situation where it's like literally a battle for them to get there at the moment, then maybe they should have been a little bit considerative of the fact that it is costing these athletes a lot of money to get there. And a lot of people haven't had access to gyms, especially here in Australia. States are just constantly shutting down and gyms seem to be the very first thing they get rid of. So a lot of people haven't had access to full training. So some of them may have been maybe less underprepared than what some of the others is. I know that's just an excuse and we shouldn't really be, you know, they shouldn't have excuses. However, in saying that, I still think that it's just, it just doesn't feel right for this year. But I'm not Dave Castro. I'm not in charge of the CrossFit Games or anything like that. So we'll just see how it goes. But I am glad that there's 20 and not 10, which would be way more interesting. So after all that, my podium picks for this year on the men's side, I think that it might be Cole Sayers year. He's been hanging around there for a while and he had an extremely dominating performance at his semi-final. And then I think Scott Panchik as well. So obviously he left individual competition and went to Mayhem team with all the changes in the teams this year. Um, he's back doing individual competition and he he's not done yet. He is really, really hot up there. And then I also think that rookie Jason Hopper, who won the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Challenge, I think he is going to hit the podium. Like, the guy is just phenomenal. He doesn't even look like he is ever concerned when he's doing a workout. His whole demeanor and personality and the way he presents himself during a workout pretty much reminds me of Tia and Matt. He never shows struggle. He never shows hurt. But he's one thing that I have noticed about him when I was watching the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit stuff was that he does watch where his competitors are a lot. Whether that's from football or whatever, because he was a professional football player before. Um, whether that's transferred across, I'm not sure. However, that could work in his favour. Now, Matt Fraser's also not there as well, so on the men's side, really, it's anyone's game. On the ladies' side, my top three, I think, is going to be Tia. So Tia, I don't think that anyone's going to be able to dethrone her unless there's like something bad happens or touch wood that doesn't because I would hate for that to happen. Um, or a workout's just really not in her favour but after the last few years I don't think anything is her weakness. She has no holes in her game. Then I think second, I'm hoping second or on the podium is Kara Saunders. I really, really want to see her get back up there. She's worked super hard. Um, you know, she's had to make some sacrifices. She's not taking her baby to the games. Whereas someone like Annie Thorosotto, she is actually taking uh, Freya to the games. Whereas uh, Kara, coming from Australia and being so expensive, her she had to make the decision to leave Scotty at home. So I hope that it like something really big and positive comes out of this because that's a massive sacrifice to have to make. Then I think um, in third place, I do think is possibly going to be rookie Mallory O'Brien. Now, she's very young, obviously. She's still only 17 years old. Uh, she is extremely fit. Like just watching how she trains, it just, it just seems like she's endless amounts of energy but she's also because she's been competing for such a long time she just seems like she's very experienced as well she almost looks like a mini Tia so her body everything looks just like Tia the way she moves the way she thinks maybe a little less Tia is a lot more composed but that comes with experience and I think that Mallory is going to lead well into Tia's spot when Tia retires so yeah, so that's my take on what's happening over the next couple of, uh, over the last few weeks and leading into the CrossFit Games. Plan on placing, getting out a lot more vlogs over the next couple of weeks, especially as the CrossFit Games unfolds. I'm also going to do some product reviews. I got the new nano shoes. Um, well, they're not really new, but for me, they're new. Uh, and talk about a few other things. And yeah, keep following up with stuff to put out to you guys. 
thanks for tuning in make sure you please hit that uh, like button subscribe and keep up to date with what i'm putting out there thanks